What's going on guys, my name is Matt and it's no secret that graphics cards are expensive right now, like really, really expensive. Because of this, many people are turning to more budget options and even opting to just not upgrade at all. For that reason, I've decided to test one of the most legendary budget graphics cards of all time and put it up against today's most popular titles, along with a few modern AAA titles to see how it stacks up. So what is the GPU in question? Well, it's the GTX 750 Ti, which again is one of the most important and legendary budget graphics cards ever to be released, and I'll tell you why right now. The 750Ti launched all the way back in February of 2014 with a price tag of $150. Performance wise, it wasn't a huge step up from the 650Ti it was replacing, but specs and benchmark numbers rarely tell the whole story. Codenamed GM107, the 750Ti was built on the Maxwell architecture, which offered improved performance and more importantly improved power efficiency over the previous generation of GPUs. This meant that the 750Ti, unlike the 650Ti, was able to run entirely off of PCIe power alone. The implications of this are massive. For the first time ever, there was a graphics card capable of modern 1080p gaming that could work in virtually any PC with a 16x PCIe slot. It was also the first gaming graphics card that came in a low profile variant, perfect for upgrading slimline prebuilds to turn them into fully fledged gaming PCs on the cheap. It was also one of the first cards at its price point to offer 2GB of GDDR5 video memory, which is part of why it's been able to maintain relevancy for so long, especially compared to its 1GB counterparts. All of this combined meant that getting into PC gaming was finally affordable and available to the masses. Getting into the card itself, this is a 750Ti from Zotac featuring a fully black design with a single orange fan. With a length of 5.75 inches or about 14.5 centimeters, this card is very compact which is pretty much how all 750Ti's were. It has a basic aluminum cooler which I'll talk about more later and like I said before there's no PCIe power connector in sight. With that being said, there were a few models of 750Ti's that did release with 6 pin power connectors so make sure to be aware of that. This card in particular has a weird IO layout with DVI, DVI-D, and a mini HDMI port. I think it was more common to see ones with HDMI, DVI, and VGA. Overall, the card is small, light, and looks fine. Nothing fancy like a backplate, but that's to be expected at this price point. Speaking of which, prices on these guys are still surprisingly high, and I'll be talking about a target price to aim for at the end of the video if you are interested in picking one up. Also, if you are picking up a used 750Ti or any used GPU, it's a good idea to change the thermal paste. I ran all of the tests prior to replacing the thermal compound because temps were fine, but if your GPU is running hot, doing a simple thermal paste change can help a lot. To do this, all I had to do was remove these four screws on the back and pull the PCB away from the cooler. I used 99% isopropyl alcohol to clean off the old paste. You can see this cooler is basically just a hunk of aluminum with a fan attached, which is a good testament to how efficient the 750Ti runs that it only requires a cooler of this magnitude. I then just added new thermal paste and pre-spread it to make sure the whole die is covered as GPUs do not have heat spreaders the same way CPUs do. Then I simply put the card back in the reverse order of how I disassembled it. With that done, it's now time to get into performance. When testing this card, I didn't want to pair it with the latest and greatest AMD or Intel CPU as that's a very unrealistic scenario in my opinion. Because of this, I went for a CPU that struck a good middle ground between being fast enough to not bottleneck the 750Ti in most situations and old enough that it would be a realistic pairing. Because of this, I decided to pair it with the Intel Core i7-2600. This is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU running on the Sandy Bridge architecture. The CPU released over 10 years ago in 2011, but it still holds up surprisingly well. This is installed in an H61 ITX board from Asus, and is being cooled by a copper core stock cooler. There's also 16GB of 1333MHz DDR3 RAM, and an SSD boot drive that all of the games are installed on. The case is a Cooler Master MB311L which provided good airflow and a 650 watt 80 plus EVGI power supply was used to power the system. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks for this little 750Ti. I tested 9 different games and if there's one you think I missed and should test next time then let me know in the comments below. I'll start things off with the simpler to run esports games and work our way up to the more difficult to run ones. Let's start things off with CSGO. I tested this game at 1080p low settings and a 
Team Deathmatch bot game on Dust 2. During my runs, I saw an average of 164 FPS with 1% lows of 75. This was pretty good performance in my opinion and felt smooth and enjoyable. I know most people want super high frame rates in CSGO, but a 164 FPS average should be fine for casual players. Next up is Minecraft, which I tested with fast graphics and a 10 chunk render distance. I hopped into creative mode and just flew around with an elytra to test the game. While doing this, I saw an average of 211 FPS with 1% lows of 55. Even though the 1% lows looked pretty bad, the game really didn't feel stuttery at all and overall was smooth. In a lot of these games, I would recommend locking the frame rate a little below the average which should help smooth things out a bit. Next up is Fall Guys, which I'm not entirely sure if it's still popular. I tested this at 1080p with the medium settings it defaulted me to. Doing this resulted in a lock 60 FPS pretty much the entire time, so if you're wanting to play Fall Guys, the 750Ti works more than okay for it. Next up is Valorant, which I tested at 1080p low and honestly thought the FPS would be higher. Doing this resulted in an 87 FPS average, which was smooth and enjoyable, but I honestly expected more as Valorant is pretty easy to run. Next up is an older AAA title, GTA 5, which I tested at 1080p low settings. I started by using the built-in benchmark which provided a 97 FPS average with 1% lows of 59. I also decided to test in-game as I wasn't sure how much of a difference performance would be in-game and in benchmark. I just ran through the first driving mission with Franklin and was pretty impressed. The 750Ti was able to run this game with a 92 FPS average and 1% lows of 65. The gameplay was very smooth and enjoyable which allowed me to deliver the stolen car in perfect condition with absolutely no damage at all. This shows that if you're wanting to play older AAA titles, then this card should do just fine. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege. I also test this game with the benchmark and in-game to see performance in both. Starting with in-game benchmark, I tested this at 1080p low and doing so resulted in an 88 FPS average with 1% lows of 73. This is pretty good performance, but I also was interested to see how it would be in-game. I hopped into a few solo training grounds matches and saw a very similar 87 FPS average with 1% lows of 70. Overall, this performance is decent and think it would be just fine for casual or even even like competitive play. Now we are going to get into the games that don't run all that great. Starting things off with Fortnite, I test this game at 1080p low using the Performance API in a Team Rumbles match. While in game, I saw an average of 51 FPS with 1% lows of 17. This was playable, but not really what I would call enjoyable. Dropping the resolution to 720 really only improved things slightly. Honestly, I thought the 750Ti would do better than this, but it is what it is. The last two games tested are modern AAA ones. First is Doom Eternal, which I tested at 1080p low in my normal benchmark run. Doing this resulted in a measly 22 FPS average with 1% lows of 18. This was not playable. Dropping down to 720p, the FPS did improve to an average of 37 with 1% lows of 27, but the experience was not enjoyable. Finally, I tested Borderlands 3, and honestly, the performance in this game was surprisingly good. I started by testing the built-in benchmark at 1080p low, but only saw an average of 33 FPS. After I dropped the resolution to 720p, I saw a massive performance increase with the average in the built-in benchmark jumping all the way up to 54 with 1% lows of 34. I also decided to test in-game and at 720p low, I received a 65 FPS average with 1% lows of 24. This was honestly pretty good performance in my opinion and was mind-blowing to me the 750Ti could run this game at 60 FPS even if it is only at 720p resolution. Again, if there's a game you think I missed and want to see in the future, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more of these budget GPU videos, let me know which card I should cover. Overall, the 750Ti is decent for a lot of games, but it's definitely showing its age. If you absolutely need a PCIe only powered card, then this is a good option. But if your system does have a PCIe power cable or you can upgrade to one, then I think there are better options out there. Right now on eBay, the average 750Ti is selling for around $90, which is way more than I would recommend paying. Given the current market, I would recommend paying no more than $60 for one and again, only if you absolutely need it. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.